um, behavioral model simulator that we are using uh, for the Dash pipeline uh, to be able to automate uh, its configuration uh, so that we can uh, start doing uh, some uh, tests and uh, there will be an infrastructure for actually running this uh, simulator in the automated environment. So let me share my screen. Um, yeah, so the pull request itself will be uh, ready by the end of the week. There is still some beautification that needs to be done, some cleanup, but I want to show uh, to show you the flow, uh, how I see it working, we can improve on that uh, in the future, uh, but it is uh, ready to incorporate uh, automated testing. Uh, all right, so if you are more or less familiar with the Dash tree, we have a serious pipeline directory where the behavioral model is placed itself, and then we have a directory um, uh, dedicated to Sai that has the script for uh, script and other files uh, for generating Sai APIs. <clears throat> um, so in the pipeline directory, it didn't we didn't change anything. Uh, so it's still uh, the same. You have your BMV two. Uh, uh, with all of the uh, source files for uh, for the uh, pipeline in uh, P4 language, and then you have a Docker file for the environment. It was uh, changed, by the way, to incorporate uh, uh, P4 runtime as well. So uh, if anyone tried running uh, or compiling the pipeline before, uh, after this pull request, uh, you'll need to rebuild the docker so there is this uh, command make docker uh, to to just rebuild it uh, now it contains a few additional dependencies such as uh, pi grpc and so on this is what's uh, used for uh, configuration and as usual i try to keep everything within the same make file so all the targets will be consolidated into one place so you get more or less uh, convenient CLI uh, to use uh, this infrastructure. Um, so first thing, uh, just rebuild the Docker. I won't do it right now because it takes time. Uh, second, of course, we need to compile our P4 code. Uh, same as before. We are not doing anything different. So there is a target uh, <clears throat> series pipeline.json. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so I want to, uh, to emphasize on a few changes to this process. Although the command is the same, uh, you may notice that uh, the resulting compilation uh, command is different. We are still using the same P4C, uh, but this time we add additional argument to generate P4 runtime files. Uh, this is needed for two purposes. First one is that now Sci API is based on uh, the P4 runtime file. So we generate the Sci API and Sci implementation based on that. And second, this will be used by, uh, by the simulator itself. <clears throat> and by the way, everything is also automated. You don't need to, as long as uh, you stick to this make file, you don't need to take care of, uh, of the files manually. Everything is fed into the uh, software switch automatically. Um, so we compiled our uh, we compiled our uh, behavioral model. For now, we only have the uh, result of P4 compilation. Uh, next step would be to translate that to Sai. Uh, so I added a new target, make Sai. So to, to explain what it's doing, um, as before, as on the previous 
uh, demos I was showing you. So let's switch to site directory. What we have in here is we'll make the font a little bit larger. Um, so we have the uh, site API generation script. Now it is enhanced to also uh, generate uh, implementation as well. So if you look at the templates directory, now we have a template for each of, for both uh, site API headers, which was uh, available up, uh, up till now, and its implementation using uh, P4 runtime. So that uh, having uh, having uh, this implementation, we can uh, write uh, automated tests uh, to configure the pipeline and uh, run different kinds of tests against it. So let's let's go and um, trigger the API's auto generation. There is also this convenience script that. Uh, is called it's it's supposed to be used with the make file um, what it's doing is um, just invoking uh, the auto generation with the relevant uh, arguments like uh, name of the dash apis and uh, stuff like that um, so what we get in the result now let's compare we have a few more uh, files in this directory. Uh, first, uh, of course, we get the SI APIs. Uh, so, as before, it is integrated into the uh, into the uh, master SI, uh, so that it can be uh, it can be used as a whole uh, package. It has both the underlay APIs and the overlay APIs. Overlays being auto generated, and um, this new file, which is uh, which is the implementation of the uh, overlay APIs, of course, it will be enhanced in the future to cover the underlay part when we will define it better. Uh, but it's pretty minimal. And um, <clears throat> I have a test in here. Uh, so the thing that I was talking about, it still needs to be beautified. I want to, I, I think it's a good idea to uh, to start a test directory in Dash repository so that we will have all the tests kept there. I will contribute the first one uh, showing uh, how the pipeline can be configured and uh, I will also add a traffic uh, test along with it that will generate uh, the corresponding Packet to uh, to what is configured by this unit test, and uh, send and receive packet and verify that uh, we got what we expected. Uh, but for now, it's all in the same directory, so this is what will change by the end of the week. Um, so having those two files, uh, SI-CPP implementation and uh, test itself, uh, we generate a bi binary compatible. Uh, with our simulator. Um, and so this is a new step. Before, what you would do is just compile the pipeline and then uh, do make run switch. Uh, in between those two steps, now you need to also uh, do SAI from here. Um, next will be running the switch itself, and let's see how it is configured using uh, this uh, SI API. Uh, so I will go into the files in a minute. Uh, but before that, I want to show you what's different about running the switch. Everything is still uh, in the script, but for you to, um, to see the difference. So now we are using a different binary. Uh, it's a different target coming uh, together with the uh, P4 uh, community behavioral model. It's called, uh, let me find a name, Simple Switch GRPC using uh, P4 runtime uh, APIs. Um, and you may notice we do not um, feed it any of the files anymore. We're saying that let's start as a clean switch because the pipeline will be loaded uh, using our SI APIs. Um, so now let's go to the 
to the auto-generated implementation. It's quite large because it's all it's all been generated by the script, but you may find uh, some pattern in here. So you have for each kind of APIs, you got uh, three callbacks, uh, create, remove, set attribute, get attribute can be extended of course so for now set and get attribute is not implemented uh, because i think initially tests won't use those uh, in the future when we will try to integrate that with the uh, sonic software stack with the occasion of course we will uh, likely need them uh, for now we have create and remove support Oops, sorry uh, so create and remove for every object and every entry is supported, which allows us to configure and clean up the configuration of the pipeline of the switch. Um, and then the test, it's quite simple. Uh, hold on. Test. Uh, So just calling those APIs, you may see that we configure uh, some of the entries like direction lookup, then uh, ENI lookup, for example, like translating MAC address to ENI, uh, then ENI to VNI values, like all of the transformations and lookups from the pipeline can be expressed with these. Uh, and the uh, say APIs eventually are uh, called. So we will see how that works. Yeah, so let's let's enter the same container. Has all the mounts ready. Uh, probably this step can be automated as well, but for now it's manual because I haven't put everything in the right place yet. Uh, but I hope you get the idea. Uh, so let's go to our site directory. Here it is. And um, let's take a look at what will happen in the, uh, in the simulator. So if we run this test. Um, hold on. Why nothing happened? Are we still running? Let me try to, to redo it. Um, I'm just going to clean up the container, start from scratch. Let's remove the test. Remove side dash. Okay, one more time. Um, yeah, make sci. Start the switch again. Okay. Oops. All right. So what this is doing is two things. First one, as I mentioned, it will load the pipeline for you. 
So that's number one. You can see the output from the uh, logger. Um, that, that is setting up the pipeline, like all of the tables, default actions for those tables, and so on. Uh, so that's number one. You don't really need to uh, to worry about that. Second, it will uh, populate those entries one by one. Uh, of course, they can be removed. Uh, so you can see that it is uh, the configuration is done. Next step, entry uh, is added to a table, direction lookup, ENI lookup, ENI mapping to ENI, and so on. And this is pretty much ready for running the traffic. Uh, yeah, so that's what I have. Uh, and as I said, by the end of the week, I will raise a pull request, uh, organize all the files nicely, and probably also you will see there uh, some uh, scappy script that will send the traffic to, to have a complete picture. So we will have something to um, uh, to work with. And from that point, we can uh the community can start working on the uh, on the test plans definition of the uh, different tests and then uh, they can be incorporated into uh, this test suite with this infrastructure yeah so that's that's what i have for today uh, yeah so if you have any questions please ask uh, i hope there will be uh you will have time to review it next week the pull request itself so we will circle back uh next week on the on the pr mary and this is just uh excellent excellent work uh amazing actually to see this you know for the very first time i'm sure people will uh, have questions but congratulations and community all appreciates the work that you've done. It's great. And everybody else in Nalnox who helped you put that together. And I hope that the community will come together and start right test because uh, that's, that's just as important as the model itself. Yes, thank yeah. you, Gerald. I see Chris has raised. Oh, Christine, if you want to finish your comment. Uh, wait. I was just going to say I can't believe what I'm seeing. Thank you, Marion. Uh, go ahead, Chris. I believe what I'm seeing. These guys are smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, well done. Uh, brilliant work, Marion and team. I wanted to ask just a couple uh, questions. One is earlier when you started the switch, you did the dash no P4, and then you made a comment. Mm -hmm. I'll load the pipeline using the SI interface. Mm -hmm. Did I hear that correctly? Is there a SI API to load the pipeline, or are you just loading the BMV2 pipeline through something? So there is uh, no explicit SI API to load the pipeline, but what I mean is that um, it is part of the library implementation, that it will load pipeline for you before, run, before executing any API. Oh, part of the library implementation of BMV2? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, okay. So... Yeah, so if, if you may notice, uh, hold on, I will, uh, I will stop the container. So here in the make file, where we are running switch, it, so first when you compile, uh, compile the code, you will get those, you will get the pipeline in the predefined path, right? And other uh, P4 runtime files needed. And when you run the switch, we mount those files in also in the predefined directories in the Docker, like Etsy dash and the file. And then when you execute any test, it will know to take uh, to take the pipeline and the P4 runtime. Uh, information from the predefined path. So as long as you stick to the same environment, it will work. Okay, thanks. The other is, could you talk a little bit about the client interface or the client server interface to the, the SI API? 
and how it relates to the original Scythrift um, proposal Microsoft put out for testing. Oh, Scythrift, yes. So Scythrift is one layer above. So we have Sci APIs, and then you can implement uh, different clients for the Sci API. So for the most trivial one was the one that I did, like just manually uh, my test, right? Uh, which directly calls Sci API. No RPC, there are no nothing. We directly link with a Sci library, and we uh, we execute calls directly. There is another way, however. Uh, there is the, uh, I don't know exactly how it's uh, implemented because it's been a long time since I've looked into that, but there is an, uh, a thrift RPC for Sci, so that you have the RPC server uh, some, uh, sitting somewhere and that, uh, that can understand any of the Sci APIs. And I don't know if any change is needed to incorporate uh, overlay APIs, which are auto-generated, uh, that I would need to check. Yeah, I, I think um, that's what I kind of figured, that you have kind of a direct C interface right now, and that's great for proving pr proof of concept at this level. So we'll probably need to have, I mean, this is a great milestone. I'm really excited about this. I think what we need to do is have some subsequent discussions on how we're going to integrate that into the RPC approach. And I, Reshma's not here on the call, I think she's out for a couple of weeks, um, but we'll want to have that discussion about how to then yeah, so the site thrift. I, I believe it's not really a big deal because even the main site is uh, extended with new objects all the time, and yeah. we don't do much of the work to support that. So it's either like uh, add a new object type and then everything else will be taken care of, or it's uh, even simpler than that. Uh, so yeah. everything. Any uh, technical, yeah, sorry. I don't think there's any technical issues. I think it's just going to be a matter of getting the workflow right, right? Uh, to, yeah. To, you know, to get the Sci repo where the Sci thrift is, and and make that see the new Sci headers that you're generating here, and then produce the final server, right? Client server. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, that can be a future thing, but this is this is a super starting point here. I shouldn't say starting point; it's a major plateau. So nice, nicely done. Yeah, probably like thrift will be uh, thrift server will be added to the Docker as well, and that will be the last missing piece. Great, nice. Yeah, hey, uh, Marian, thanks a lot. Really, you know, excellent work. Um, definitely, you know, major major accomplishment. I have a quick question on the the testing side of the thing that you you carried out, right? Um, so currently, how it exists today, um, before your uh, you know uh, PR is going to emerge, the way I see it, when I carried out all the testing there, what I saw was you know we ran the simple switch CLI in order to populate uh -huh. the tables, right? So uh -huh. what I see right now, um, just trying to see the difference between what we were doing before and what you're doing right now, are you really using the Sci API now to, to populate the, uh, mm -hmm. the tables, right? Uh, and yeah. then, it, it, so in turn, the Sci APIs are basically calling those P4 runtime calls to, to you know, populate those tables, correct? Is that is that right. how the difference is right now? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, so here you see we have everything now in the Sci format, you have the entry, you have attributes of these entries. You can uh, you can find the full definition in the headers and then uh, the uh, Sci API call. Uh, so yeah, this is conforming to Sci APIs, but under the hood it is translated to, yeah, I can show you that one. Uh, let's do Sci dash, let's CPP. Create ENI, for example, uh, ENI to VNI entry create uh, outbound. Uh, so what's happening here is that signature is psi, however, it is translated into P4 runtime uh, values, like you have a table ID from P4 runtime file, uh, you create the match action entry. Uh, create an action and so on and so forth. So you populated using uh, uh, P4 runtime APIs. 
and eventually at the end of this you will see something like uh, your insert an entry into the table uh, so yeah so now there is no need for manual adding of the entries using the uh, CLI uh, you have uh, an automated way so that's the oh. that's the primary difference it was oh. uh, the last piece that we couldn't uh, have automated right awesome this is great so I can really see these things since I actually ran the the manual piece and now I can you know really appreciate how you basically have come up with this automated one so what you showed there were a couple of files you showed me right how much of the that is actually auto generated and how much is basically was manually coded um Yes, so everything except the test is auto-generated. Oh, I test see. So the one manually. test is written manually. So sci dash dot cpp was was auto-generated completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so the steps were basically that you know when we went into this you know when we did the Mac make Docker and then you know when we did the P four C compile part and generated the auto uh, sorry generated the P four runtime code. Then when we went back to the SI, it essentially pulled all those P4 runtime code into the SI, uh, generated SI APIs, and mm -hmm. essentially that's the total implementation. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is great. This is great. Thank you. Appreciate it. I think now we can connect all the dots and see how it all comes together. Appreciate it. You know, there is there is one other thing that I also wanted to ask about this uh, PTF test. You know, before the the Sci Thrift or Sci Thrift PTF and so forth, there's a pure packet test. You know, from in a packet test framework from the P4 itself, right? Which yeah, just it's basically being used in Sonic. Yeah, testing. it's being used in Sonic exactly. So, is that is that integrated here? Because remember, you showed that you can populate the table with the making those Sci API calls. The next step would be is to really use the PTF to send out the traffic to ensure that okay, all those the tables are hit, and then we can see the uh, you know whatever was basically was populated is really getting exercised. Yeah, it's not uh, in the Docker yet, but uh, but I don't see really a problem with that because that's just a Python library. Sure. Uh, sure. So of course, yeah, I, I will add a traffic test. Uh, I will run into this uh, uh, the PTF is missing uh, so it will be there as well thank you yes yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and if I wanted to add on to your comments um, yes yeah, side the side thrift framework also uses you know PTF and that's real well known in sonic for kind of functional testing not at line rate and right. it's easy and popular but if you go back and read some of the early docs I wrote in the test under the test part of this repository, I talked about using an approach that leads to line rate testing as well. So we will be introducing eventually tests that use a different framework for sending packets. And it's an open API called Snappy and Open Traffic Generator. And that can go from software testing all the way up to full line rate with the same API. So that will be getting introduced going, you know, at some point in the future. So we'll oh, good, good. You, know, you can go up to any line rate available, the same with the same libraries, the same actual same scripts. So that, good, that'll good. be that'll no, be thanks. coming out. You know, we're we're working on that. Sure, sure. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah. Any other questions for Marian, guys? Awesome job. Nope. Yes, Beautiful. awesome job. It's a, it's a milestone for sure. Yeah. That was a lot of work. Um, thanks, Marian. Um, anything else from you, or should we give you a break? Uh, for me, yeah, I talked to you personally about that, but uh, um, I want to update everyone. There is mm -hmm. still work going on uh, with regards to connection tracking to support that in the simulator. Um, so we have, I think, all or almost all implementation 
for uh, for the simulator ready. Uh, we are still pending some things in the PNA community, but I don't want to be blocked by that. So uh, in a week or two, we will also introduce uh, the connection tracking support in the in the simulator. Great. So you know uh, today, right? As as people have experienced this thing when they when they uh, try to do this, uh, you know, all the steps to to build and do go through make Docker and then go through the P4 compiler and so forth, you know, with all the behavioral model. Uh, one of the things um, they end up doing is that they, they have to really comment out this connection tracking code and and this, you know, the new match kind for the ACL. So once you are going to really, you know, merge this PR, Will we still have to continue to do this thing, or is it just basically already you're going to take care of it before uh, before doing that? Um, yeah, so those two not yet supported features, probably we can by default leave them out. That's a good idea, and as soon yeah. as we will have a support, uh, we can turn them on. That's I agree great. Yeah. with that, yeah. yeah. Which ones are we yeah, leaving no, out? Actually, it's a... The, the connection tracking. So uh, can you give us an update of what happened? Maybe it was last Monday or something. There was a, there was a meeting with the PNA group. What whatever happened? And that anybody have an update? Um, so this was not driven by me. So I will need to uh, to bring the right person next time so we can talk about it. Was there at a, least the, uh, you know at least the re, re, issues? Hey, hey, Gerald, the recent meeting was was canceled, but I don't know the one before that if somebody attended it, then they have an update from there. Um, uh, yeah, so if anyone from either Consando or anyone who attended it, um, yeah, or anyone last else, last week in this was one, the yeah. SmartNIC conference, and I think it was um, yeah canceled, but the one before. Okay. Sounds like that meeting didn't happen. Right. Yeah, probably. Marian, this is Chris. Uh, another question. Um, do you see in the future we might want to create Git actions to build this, you know, whenever a stage commit or a pull request is done so that we, we know everything runs before it's committed? Yeah, that would be good. I just uh, know how to, uh, yeah, what to start with. Uh, probably we need some help from someone who has experience. Okay, okay, yeah, because that that way, for people who might not be familiar, um, it's just kind of a CI/CD automation pipeline workflow where yeah, of course, you check in code. Well, other not everyone on this call might be familiar with it, so I just wanted to briefly say it's if you check in code to something, um, you can have the Git uh, framework recognize something that requires a test or an action or some step. And in this case, what we could do is actually all, all these steps that Marian just showed us to build the switch and run it, et cetera, that could all be done automatically anytime there's a commit done to this uh, particular sub project. And it would pass or fail. And that would be part of a pull request. So you wouldn't even try to accept a pull request that didn't build properly. So it's just something we want to do, you know, going forward, so that just gets rid of the human error component. That's excellent. You know, I, this is an excellent suggestion, uh, Chris. This this definitely we need, and this is I would was also asking in previous meetings about some sort of a unit testing for people who are submitting their, you know, behavior models. As we have a quite list of things that in, in the in the project dashboard that people are going to bring in. So yeah. There has to be some, you know, uh, checking. To ensure that okay, what people are submitting has been tested, it gets integrated. Because remember, once this thing is in play, uh, it becomes part of you know when people check in their, their changes to the behavior model or they they start to submit uh, you know their contributions. We want to ensure that everything basically remains kosher when people check out and when when people try to build uh, the pipelines and then try to carry out certain, certain testing in the simulated environment. They don't want to start to you know see failures, right? So this is a great way of actually uh, putting these uh, checks in place, right? 
uh, yeah. to ensure that whatever is getting checked in, it's thoroughly vetted out. And thanks for you know backing that up. And uh, even one step beyond that, we could have building and generating artifacts that are put in some kind of repository, much like Sonic is built regularly. And there's a status dashboard, et cetera. You know, this particular build passed or failed. You know, and it you creates mean daily builds, right? It creates artifacts that you can just download, like, you know, a sonic build image for, right. you know, XYZ ASIC. That's, you know, that's going to take some work. It's quite a bit of infrastructure work, but I think it's a good aspiration, right? So that people don't have to manually get clone go through all the steps, build it, have it in their work directory, and then start playing with it. There'd be some artifact already there. But that's that's kind of long term. So we will need some sort of a back end, you know, Azure account to carry out all of those things, right? Yeah, probably I'm sure that yeah. The Microsoft Sonic team, you know, they have that in place. So I guess right. they're probably, you know, these are longer term goals. Probably need to have sub working groups on different things. Right. Okay. Good. Um, thank you. And um, just FYI for everyone, we've been meeting the high availability working group and we met the other day to continue documenting requirements and how we might want to handle uh, future pieces of work. Um, we're also still doing the behavioral model work group where we're working through the work items needed to complete the behavioral model for VNet to VNet. And uh, for the smart switch RFI, uh, Microsoft is going to review feedback on May 10th. And it looks like we, uh, oh, Prince had gone ahead and uh, converted to the, we had the JSON and he's converted to Yang and given that to us and the SDN team to review and uh, go over. And it also looks like we're still waiting on the metering document that um, was supposed to be delivered after a few weeks. So I'll, I'll go back and check on the metering document. I know there's other priorities right now in front of that. Um, so thank you, Prince, for, for doing that conversion or translation. And that's all I have for this week. Yeah, uh, we should meet on that to make sure that the community actually understands that North Sound interface and uh, is commenting on it. and. You know, I don't want him to just convert it and then, you know, it's just missing a bunch of stuff. So we should have yeah. another meeting on that and let people ask questions, but give yeah. people time to go and look at it. Uh, yeah, it's not released questions. to the GitHub yet. Um, Michael was needing to go over it first. Is that right, Prince? Uh, no, Christian, it's, it's released. It's a PR. In oh, that's right. You're right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, I saw the PR. That's that. right. Let me find yeah, it. I saw the I, I saw that PR and and and, and thanks a lot, uh, Prince, for really you, you know uh, heading this effort and taking the take you know taking this initiative of converting from JSON to Yang, and I I started seeing this thing and it looks like you know um, it's a great start. So definitely you know if people who basically want to see the data models in the Yang format, it'll really help. Um, so thank you. I have one question about, uh, um, you know, I saw some PR about this, some document on the holistic design or uh, something like that. Is there something going on? And is there yeah. an update? What, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Basically, um, we've gone ahead and expanded on the initial document, and we wanted to add even more information around each piece. So we, we took a copy of what's published and we've added to it. And, and vetted it through Gerald and some other people. And then as of yesterday, we'll remove the old, uh, I think we called it the HLD, and we've named the um, we've named the new document the same name, so all the pointers will stay, but it's just a more fleshed out version. Okay. So I can I can show it to with, you if you which like. Which we will so. continuously update guys over time. Improve, yeah. Yeah, it's here in right here high level design so we've we've gone ahead and added a lot more information and updates into it so that's all it is it's just a kind of a version update okay. mm -hmm. some more high level sort of like umbrella document or something like that is it it contains Correct. we're 
Hoping yeah. all the pieces. Yeah, go ahead, Gerald. Sorry. Yeah. It, it is a it is a language version, right? It's not code. So sure. for people who want to come in and understand what is that, you know, <laughs> okay. the first thing to do is go read this document, sure. right? Yeah. It's yeah. a grand readme we've been all waiting for with bated breath. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Christina, can we look at um, um, this diagram? I put the link up. Since we started talking about uh, schema, I wanted to just share this picture. And um, at, since Prince is on the call, hopefully he can answer a question that's been burning in my mind. Um, so I tried to capture the relationship of the different schema layers in that diagram. If you could just scroll down to that. You know, it shows how we have GNMI northbound schema defined in Yang. It gets translated in the dash GNMI container into app DB objects. And then those get transformed into ASIC DB objects through the orchestration, right? And then ultimately applied to the SI interface. And um, Sonic config gen is kind of the canonical way of importing and exporting app level configurations using JSON. Um, I was just doing this so I could understand it and ask some questions about it. And one of the tasks that's going to be coming forward, I guess, for the the, the Dash uh, GNMI container developers um, is translating the Yang into AppDB. And that's kind of just a mapping exercise as, as far as I understand. It's almost a one-for-one -one translation from one schema to another. And to me, that's an opportunity yeah. for writing tests against all these interfaces with one source of truth. Um, and, and having one set of declarative data, which I'm proposing we think about using the Sonic config gen format uh, as a way of starting with one set of test vectors and then applying them to every interface that's applicable. That's just a proposal. Um, yeah, I think uh, sure we can consider that, but again, like Sonic config gen is not for AppDB, it is mainly for the, the config DB. So, so maybe some variation on this on this diagram, but something like this. Yeah. Makes so sense. But overall, this is uh, this makes sense. Like uh, the config backend of the GNMI container is the one that um, puts those data into the AppDB. However, if you look at the Sonic Yang model, it's pretty much very similar to what we will um, eventually have in the DB. So it's kind of one to one mapping. There is uh, there is no uh -huh. um, you know, complex conversions that are required at the right. GNMI layer. Right. Yeah. So, so of course we would definitely need some sort of uh, testing these APIs. Um, we can uh, we can plan that, but I think a Sonic config gen may not be the right okay. one here because we are not dealing with uh, uh, config DB here. But doesn't that extract, um, doesn't that represent data that could be all the configuration objects we need, or is there a different format? When you say we don't have config DB, I guess I'm not quite sure I understand that. So these uh, objects are all translated directly to the app, app DB, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so Sonic has different DB instances for one is app DB, one is uh, config DB for all those static based configurations. I see. So I see. yeah, config then is only for the static stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's mainly like you know uh, ports and things like that. Configuration, ports yeah, ports, speed. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, so, maybe we could. Have sorry, guys, uh, to like... jump in, but if we do a cold boot, if we do a cold boot, Sonic usually loads Sonic config whatever DB. In this case, if we do a cold boot on um, this appliance, basically everything will have to be pushed again by SDN controller. Absolutely. So in the yeah. cold boot, there is no. Um, requirement so it will be wiped no. clean, basically. That's right. <laughs> but if you, it is warm boot, a hitless reboot, then it everything will be restored. So that's the idea. Okay. So and it will be um, restored from the app DB. Yes. Or in in case of hitless reboot, yeah, warm boot. Okay. So and if a user, so, sorry, Chris, thank you. And if a user wants to pull the config out of the device. The only way to do it will be to read the app DB. 
true. You can do the same get calls, right? So, okay. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. No, it's okay. So, so Prince, thanks for the clarification and correction. Could you propose a, a machine readable config format that we can use to drive test cases for any interface? That's kind of the mission. We could then use that you know, agnostic format, or maybe it's tied to one of these interfaces and then translate into all the other formats. Because what we want to do is have test vectors. We don't have to keep rewriting for every northbound. You know, we can translate them or render them on the fly. The data, you know, an IP address is an IP address. I don't care if it's represented as Yang or JSON or Psi, right? It's, it's still the same information. So we should try to have one agreed upon source of information for those. And, and so that, that's the question. Do, do you have a okay. off the top of your head a recommendation? Uh, we have uh, some references for that, like even uh, currently existing in Sonic uh, for such um, validations. Maybe, um, maybe I think we need we can take it offline and and yeah. Uh, get yeah, back that, to you on that yeah. yeah that we can't hash that out now but i just want yeah. to throw it out there because you you put up a you know sort of an example json file to give people an idea of the kinds of config objects but it was just treated as a sort of a um, an example right to get the conversation it wasn't a definitive schema yes and yes i think it would be it's important to have a definitive schema that test vectors can all be represented in um because otherwise we're going to be doing way too much work over and over again so yeah. one more thing to clarify here, the yeah. the JSON example is just for reference for sure, okay? Right. The actual schema definitions is either you can refer this Yang file or in the Sonic HLD, there is a section for the, the schema definitions. The, the one that I think in your diagram also you have mentioned. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is we need Christina. to, as a group, agree. If I have a file in this format, I can use it. Right. I mean, we, we have to just have a single format that, that can represent a configuration of all this as a starting point. And then we can always transform it. Or and that directly that. apply to AppDB. Is that what you're looking for? Well, that's a proposal. If, if that's okay, the okay, right got place. It, got it. Yeah. it seems like a good place. Um, and, you know, because we want, what we want to do is come up with a method where we have declarative test data and then you just write a simple trans later to turn into whatever northbound you want and you can run all the tests at every level of the stack and you should get the same result in the data plane so it's a way of really you know verifying correctness everywhere and um you know i'm, I'm a lazy engineer i want to write one one test vector and then send it to any interface through a transformation of some sort and that way you don't have you know to do the work over you don't have errors creeping in and drift um so a related question is when you transform from the Yang schema into the AppDB, is there a way to capture that transformation as a piece of standalone code that's like a library that we can run tests against just that because it's just a transformation? Yes, yes. Not yes, have it that, all tied into the deep plumbing of something? Yes, that, that is possible. That's something like a that shared library or something that we could yeah. use. Yeah. I wanted to propose that we try to do things that way where the transformation is encapsulated and not tied into lots of plumbing, like some code is the plumbing. You can't separate the database access from the transformation because it's all kind of, um, you know, intertwined. If we can isolate the mapping between different schemas as a shared library or some piece of code, it would really help. Um, you know, in the testing, unit testing, validation, and and comprehension. Yeah, I think we can we can have plan something like a test genomy container that um, mm -hmm. just uh, accepts some API calls and then writes to the AppDB, so there's no um, other dependencies required. Either that, That's or something that you, uh, it converts it from one data transfer object to another, right? So that you're not even talking about RPCs; it's just a transformation. But that's that's another, you know, coffee talk, I guess. Another conversation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just ways of, yeah. of isolating the mappings in a, in a very standalone way that's separate from plumbing. So in the same vein, you know, we, we need to also start to see about ASIC DB, right? So once the 
So we need to see that how the, the schema for the ASIC DB is going to look like such that, you know, those, whatever gets populated in ASIC DB, we can get translated into this, you know, the SI API eventually to talk to the SYNC D and then which eventually goes to this one. So, so is there any, um, is there any plan of saying that how once we have these overlay APIs getting generated to see that, okay, we have the schema for the ASIC DB also gets generated as well? So typically we don't have the definitions of ASIC DB schemas because it's a, it's a little bit cryptic to understand, right? Uh, right. Um, so, but I think uh, got the point, like how it will appear uh, like in, an, in sort of some examples uh, to capture, but, uh, you know, today yeah. what happened, as, as we just saw, right, we are, we are generating the entire SI API, even SI API implementation. Everything is auto-generated, right, from the behavior model. So that, that begs the question that can we also auto-generate the schema for the tables for the ACDB as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am not sure if that could be easily achieved because that's kind of the functionality of the orchestration agent, right? Right, right. So, yeah, but if you if you mandate uh, mandate the org agent to write it in the format that essentially is easily translatable from there into because eventually it's a side radius uh, API, yes. right? That yes. that org agent calls in order to populate those ones. So. So if you say that, okay, here are the side radius APIs, and here is the mandated, you know, the schema that, that should be populated so that it can easily be translated into the notification to the sync DB and eventually to the side API, that yeah. that really connects all the dots together, right? I like what <laughs> so, you're saying, uh, yeah. it's, just, it's just a co corollary to the previous conversation. Exactly, sing, yeah. Single source of truth, mm. give it a human error, a Jinja template, and go for it, right? Like like uh, Marion did for this other. But yeah, I think that's something I, I, we can plan as well. Yeah. Yeah, food for thought. I guess you know maybe we can yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we as we try to wrap up this meeting. You know we can wrap up on this note that perhaps you know we can start thinking about and see if if that's a possibility, right? Okay, I'll put that in the notes where hopefully we start thinking about it in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and. You know, thank everybody for their time and their um, input into the conversation. And thank you, Marian, for the, the presentation. Um, I hope you, all, you guys have a good week, and I'll see you next week. And if you have uh, things you'd like to discuss, please email me at chrisney at microsoft.com, and I can try to add them to the agenda. Yeah, thanks, Christina. Thank you, everyone. Great meeting. Appreciate it.